Welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video with Blazing Corp. We've got update highlights 4.6. We're going to go through them here momentarily. Next. All right. Welcome back. Uh, we've got update highlights. Uh, so it looks like a new raid update's coming. Uh, when is it coming? Uh, it doesn't really say here right off the top, probably in the next couple of days. Actually, I'm assuming probably in a day uh, here when the new Doom Tower rotation goes into effect uh, here. So um, let's see. They have a number of champions lined up to join the roster. That's pretty cool. Uh, there, you kind of can't go wrong there. Uh, let's see. In ooh, including the winner of the Community Champion Concept Contest. Ooh, that was long ago. I swear that was in like January, February, around that time uh, here. But uh, that's just an extra. So like then we also have the Doom Tower rotation. So two bosses are coming down the line, uh, pipeline. I'm really excited for that. We'll uh, we'll get into that once that's live uh, here. Uh, we'll do normal Doom Tower first because we both know most of us are on normal Doom Tower, especially in the mid game uh, here. And then uh, we'll try to get through hard Doom Tower. Um, yeah, we'll try. We'll give that. Uh, we'll give that a shot. That should be uh, quite interesting. Probably fail a lot uh, trying to get through this, but uh, I'm excited, man. New content means uh, you know new concepts, new champions, and old champions that we didn't really think would be any good, uh, or we just didn't think to use. Now coming to the forefront as their situational awareness or their situational use becomes really high, high end. Hey, how you doing? And uh, let's see. So it looks like we've got uh, two new artifact sets and then some rebalancing uh, there. And then uh, finally, uh, they've listened to us. Oh. And they've introduced uh, Clan Quest and uh, Clan Shop. They're rejigging that. So, ooh, that's interesting. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, Doom Tower rotation first thing. So, uh, let's see. Doom Tower rotation three is coming. Oh, looks like it's going to be the final one. Ooh, interesting. So, Doom Tower is going to be finished. And I guess they're going to start working on Void Tower or something like that. Uh, there, hopefully, a dupe system would be nice. <laughs> Right, so um, yeah, uh, so let's see. Do do do. So they're gonna cycle through each version of the Doom Tower, um, so it doesn't come stale. So that's fine. Uh, let's see. You could expect to see some of the old bosses show up on various floors, though their affinity may be different. Many of the normal floors will be rebalanced and offer a different set of enemies to fight and defeat. Finally, there will be new secret room requirements as well. You've got to love new secret rooms that some of them are just ridiculously hard. So definitely have to build out a solid rotation of champions to be able to get through uh, those secret rooms for sure. So let's look at the first of the two bosses they're adding to the new Doom Tower. So Abomino. Uh, Bamano, the Dreadhorn. Yeah, he looks like he looks mean, and he can be any affinity, so that's uh, that's fun. I guess they'll change uh, as they go through different iterations of the Doom Tower. So uh, understandable there. Sword, you can All right, so let's see, uh, Rhinerus Crush. A ruinous crush, I should say. Oh my goodness, ruinous crush. All right, so uh, let's see. Decreases bomb detonation countdowns by one turn. Also instantly activates any HP burn debuffs on each target and decreases the duration of those buffs by one turn. Dude, that's sick. Dude, that's a ridiculous. Yeah, that's a ridiculous skill. Wow. Interesting. 
All right, so Magma Flood. Attacks all enemies, places HP burn debuff on each enemy for two, for three turns. Uh, passive effect. Oh, no. Passive effect. Oh, you can... That can't be good. All right, so uh, enemies receive 100% more damage from HP burn debuffs for each bomb debuff they are under. Holy crap. Oh, you can... That's insane. Huh. Oh, that's not good. All right, so um, Rain of Bombs. Removes all buffs from all enemies, then attacks them. Removes all buffs from all enemies, then attacks them. So that sounds like a Seer ability. Places a bomb debuff on each enemy that detonate after two turns. Holy crap. Places one additional bomb debuff for each buff removed by this skill. The bomb debuff cannot be blocked or removed. Oh, jeez. Are you kidding me right now? Huh, so that's every three turns. So you have to fight this guy much like the Celestial Dragon or a Celestial Griffin. I uh, hear you're going to have to kind of have people with very short buffs, maybe one, one or two turn buffs uh, here. So that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Basically, you don't want him being able to remove any buffs from you. Because that's going to mess you up because they're going to put a ton of bomb debuffs. And then he's going to do this. He's going to reduce those detonation turns. And yeah, that's not going to be fun at all. All right. Places a so dread minions. Places a 50% increase attack on the bombinal, the dread horn for five turns. Five turns. Oh, you can what then summons two dread bombs and grants an extra turn oh, you can... holy crap the increased attack buff cannot be removed oh my goodness oh, you can... that's insane summons one dread bomb every time bombinal's turn meter is decreased oh my goodness you can't even bring in turn meter decrease Oh, jeez. Crap, man. Wow. Oh, that's not good. That is not good. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. Man, this boss is uh, looking like no joke. Oh, hell no. Yeah, looking like no joke right now. Crap, you can't bring in turn meter decrease. You can't bring in people who have more than two turn buffs that I hear. Crap. And then you can't wipe off his increased attack. So you definitely have to bring in someone with increased defense for sure. You're gonna have to have hella high resistance. Although I think most of the, I think the bomb, yeah, bombs debuffs cannot be blocked or removed on the rain of bombs. Okay. So basically you wanna just make sure that he only places the one bomb debuff. If he places, if he's able to place more than that, you're going to get wrecked. Okay. And at each time an enemy places any, so pressure wave is passive. Oh, goodness. Each time an enemy places any debuff except bomb debuffs on bombable. Bombable? Bombable. Oh, jeez. Places a bomb debuff on that enemy that detonates after two turns. Each time an enemy places any debuff. Oh, snap. So they basically, okay. So we thought this day was coming. 
where the bomb champions would be, I guess, important. And it has come. They are going to be the ones rolling into here and going to be. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's a passive. Okay. So it can't place any debuffs on him or you're going to get bombs. Oh, snap. Cheese, cheese, cheese. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Yeah, wow. All right, so his pressure wave bombs can't be blocked or removed. Each time a bomb debuff detonates on an enemy, has a 50% chance of placing a stun debuff on all other enemies for one turn. Abominal receives 200% more damage from bomb debuffs. Okay. We're bringing bomb champions in. So, dang. Who the hell do I have who uh, has bombs? Oh, jeez goodness. That is insane. Who the hell do I have that has bombs? Uh, let's see. Oh, let's just see who has bombs uh, in general. So, Astrolith, Laura Shajar, War Mother uh, for legendaries, uh, Gelkuk or Gulkut, uh, Grunch Killjoy, who I have, so that's good. Dr uh, Soul Drinker, I have Talia. Okay, so those are epics. Magma Brud, um, I probably have him. Uh, Malabrish. I have her. Tree Feller. Crap, I hope I still have her. Uh, and an Uncommon. A uh, Lemure. Huh. And then Decrease Bomb Duration Skill Champions. Well, Fanax, who we just built out, so that's fantastic. Soul Drinker uh, for Epics. Lord Cesar for Legendaries. And then we have uh, Malabranch for Rare. Crap, the Mallard Ranch has become, like, ridiculous. Like, really needed to roll into a bomb hole? Huh. I'm probably going to build out Talia now. Um, Yeah, I guess I'm going to build out Talia. Where, what is her bomb showcase here? So, let's just take a look here just to see. So, we've got Talia, Sacred Order. I've got her. I've got uh, Fanax. So, we're going to be building her out. So, we're going to need her. Uh, places A, 25% increase attack, 30% increase crit rate. And attacks all enemies has a 75% uh, booked up to, nope, still 75% of placing a bomb debuff that will detonate after three turns. When Fanex is on the same team. So Fanex and her have to roll in for her to place a bomb. Great. Uh, let's see. So she counterattacks for two turns. So that's cool. And then 100% chance when booked of placing a 25% weakened debuff on enemies for two turns. Ooh. Yeah, not good. Not good. So we'd probably turn that off. Yeah, turn that off and just use A1A2. Huh. She's not the best bomb champion in the world, I do have to say. Now, let's take a look at uh, here. Do, 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 do. Malabranch. Because who would have ever thought that she would be important? Uh, here, so attacks on enemy decreases bomb detonation debuffs by one, countdowns by one turn. Oh, well, that's on her A1. Nice. Uh, do do do. Attacks one enemy two times, place a counter attack buff on this champion for two turns. Okay. Uh, attacks one enemy has a 60% chance of placing a bomb debuff that detonates after three turns. That's booked up to 70, 80, 85%. Crap, man. Whoever would have thought that I would be building out Malabranch? Wow. Okay, so looks like we'll be building out Malabranch. Actually, it will help. It's twofold help, actually, because I need to finish de uh, Demon Spawn. 
um, faction wars. So what the hell? Might as well have her uh, roll in. Oh, she's ridiculously fast too. Huh? Oh, she might be worth it. Is her stuff based on attack? Yeah, she's got attack multipliers. She got pretty decent attack multipliers too. Okay. So Malabranch, Talia, you just, uh, you've just been added to the list. All right. Well, well, there's, uh, you know, some ways in which to beat, uh, Bombable. I'm sure some people got some old, like crazy, crazy champions that they can just bring in and just nuke them into the ground. But I don't know if that strategy is going to work on Bombano uh, here. I'm sure we'll see some of the um, the pay-to-win guys come out and just destroy the boss. But for us mid-game guys, we're going to take a different tact. And I'm pretty sure everyone who has been pulling shards has Malabranch. I'm pretty sure I have one. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have one of her maxed out, actually. So let's take a look, actually, here. Uh, let's see. So this is uh, this is garbage. So let's go into champions here. Pretty sure she's in my vault somewhere. Malabranch, Malabranch. Do, 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 do. Where are you? She's hiding somewhere. I'm sure I'm gonna scroll right by her. Well, she's a rare anyway. So let's see. I know I have you sitting somewhere. Oh crap, come on. Man, you guys probably saw her on the screen. I probably scrolled right by her. Let's take another look at what she uh what she looks like here. Let's see. Uh oh, okay. She's got the little eyes. Oh man, don't tell no. I'm pretty sure I kept her. I'm pretty sure I kept her. Actually, she might not be in my vault, actually. Yeah, she might not be in my vault. I don't see her in the vault, so she might be just uh, sitting around like uh, here. Ah, there she is. Oh, surprisingly, she's in a 40. All right. We're going to get her built out. She's got a speed aura, does she? Doesn't she? In arena battles, of course, useless. You know what the funny thing is? Is I've gotten so much of her um, from just pulling. That I've, uh, I don't actually have to use as many rare books as I thought to get her built out. Oh, fantastic. Well, welcome to the team. She looks good too. Very scantily clad, but uh, is what it is uh, here. So we're going to be building her out. We're going to be testing her in some places before, actually, well, we're trying to build her out before, um, before this new rotation comes in, but that's uh, probably going to be really hard to do uh, here, most likely. All right, so uh, let's move on. So we got the Dread Bob. All right. So Dread Bob, it's minion. That's what comes out. Uh, explodes at the start of each turn and deals pure damage to each enemy equal to 40% of their max HP. Holy goodness. Jeez. What? Oh, jeez. We're going to take a lot of L's. We're going to take a lot of L's in here. So we got to bring in people who can heal. Oh, man. Scylla the Drakes is going to be super important. Doom Priest probably super important right here. Wow. No, God. No, God, please. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, that's not fun. All right, so, ah. Okay, so we gotta bring in Freeze. So Ninja's gonna be super important uh, for Freeze uh, here, cause he's got the AOE Freeze. There's not too many people who have, a who have Freeze, especially AOE 100% Freeze. Oh, snap, Crackle Pop. All right, so deals pure damage to each enemy equal to 20% of their max HP instead if the Dread Bomb is under a freeze debuff at the start of the turn. Okay, damage inflicted will ignore shield buffs. Holy goodness, are you kidding me? That is not cool. Yeah, we're going to 
gonna take a lot of L's in here, like a lot. The Dread Bomb is immune to all debuffs, effects, and sources of damage except its own skills. What? The Dread Bomb is immune to all debuffs, effects, and sources of damage except its own skills and freeze and HP burn debuffs. Fills the Dread Bomb's turn meter by 20% every time it receives damage from an HP burn debuff oh snap oh snap 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 no yeah that's not cool huh so you gotta have them frozen but you can't beat them you can't even beat them just by hitting them? Only HP burn. Huh. So that means. So Ninja is still going to be awesome here. Because he's got the HP burn blow up. Uh, you're probably going to bring in. I mean, we're probably going to find some really obscure. I mean, a Gnarl is probably going to be good in here. Oh, man. Man, free sets are going to be like the new thing. Damn it. That is not cool, man. All right, so Bomb Wolf is all about bombs. He has a ton of them to place on your team and extra scary dread bombs that can't be stopped in any way. To make matters worse, he can also strip your champions of all buffs if their resistance is not high enough and will retaliate with bombs if you try to debuff him. Yeah, so resistance is officially the best stat in the game yeah might uh, yeah yeah definitely the best stat in the game all right so wow that's uh crap so the things you'll need most are resistance healing and someone who can reliable free reliably freeze the dread at bombs to ensure they don't hurt as much upon exploding try to limit the debuffs you place on bombinal Though you can use champions to extend debuff duration if you if you're feeling brave and time them well. Huh. You can throw your own bombs into the mix. They are on one of Bom they are one of Bombinal's biggest vulnerabilities. It's going to be a tough fight either way, but the Dreadhorn plates you'll win will allow you to craft new fortitude artifact set that provides a significant bonus to the wearer's resistance. So plus 40 resistance, plus 10% defense, and is a two-piece set, so they stack high. So that's pretty much, um, Dread Horror Plates are pretty much the perception gear. So that's kind of cool. Uh, definitely be farming this guy. Uh, if I can beat him is going to be the question here. <laughs> this is... Uh, oh, hell no! Yeah, wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. This might be the new Scarab King for me, man. Like, just having to build champions just to beat this guy. Oh, he's going to be interesting. All right. So, uh, we've got Astralix, Astralanix, the Dark Fae. So, she's a boss. She's a creature of the Doom Tower. Let's see. Dark Light Beams attacks all enemies, has a 100% chance of placing a leech debuff on each enemy for two turns. Oh, hell no. Wow. Resistance, resistance, resistance. Oh, snap. Crap, 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 crap. Yeah, we're already taking an L just because of that ability. That is an insane ability, man. 100% chance, son. What? All right, Dark Tendrils. Attacks all enemies, steals one random buff from each enemy according to the number of magic champions on the enemy team. One buff for each magic champion. Okay. 
steals turn meter from each enemy according to the number of force champions on each team. 10% turn meter for each force champion. Okay. Has a 25% chance of placing a true fear debuff each on each enemy for one turn. Holy crap. The chance increases by 25% for each void champion on the enemy team. Oh, crap. Wait, hold on. Oh, wait. Okay, of course. Heals Astrolytics by 10% of her max HP for each spirit champion on the enemy team. Oh, you can... oh hell no. Wow. Those are two beastly abilities. I think the best, I guess the best of the worst choices would be magic or forest champions. You literally cannot bring spirit champions in here. Yeah, you're not bringing spirit champions in here. So what we're hoping is she doesn't come out as force. Because if she comes out as force, we're going to be forced to bring in uh, either force champions or spirit champions. And uh, we're going to get messed up. You definitely do not want to bring void champions in here whatsoever. All right. That is a crazy ability. Yeah, that's absolutely bonkers. Oh my gosh. All right, Fa Fairy Storm, attacks all enemies. These are all attack all enemy skills. Okay, that's fantastic. Uh, all living allies will team up and join this attack. Damage increases by 25% for each ally. Sure you can Wow. Just reading that skill made me take an L. Oh my goodness. All right, so Dark Abduction banishes one enemy champion and spawns a mirror copy of them into Astralix team. Astralix team. Places a true fear debuff on all enemies for one turn. Increases Astralix dark energy counter by one. Dark energy counter. What? Increases Astralix dark energy. So there's got to be something. Okay, hold on here. Oh, maybe it's this. So Fey Mirror. Passive. Places a perfect veil buff on Astralix team, the dark Fey, for three turns. And spawns mirror copies of all enemies onto Astralix team. Astran, Astranlix. Oh my goodness. Jeez. A uh, team at the start of the battle spawns mirror copies of all enemies onto Astralix team. Every time her dark energy counter reaches five. Oh, I see. Okay. Also places a perfect veil buff on Astra Astranex, the Dark Fey, for three turns every time her dark energy counter reaches five. All right, so that's fun. Okay. Man, I just took an L. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Took an L just reading that. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's ridiculous. All right, so I Astra Astralen Astralix. Oh my goodness, is the second boss you'll face in the new rotation, and she also has some unique game mechanics to utilize against your team. She starts the battle concealed by perfect veil buff and has the exact copies of your champions fighting at her side. She will also be able to banish your champions. It's a new status effect that takes the affected champion out of the fight. They can't sustain damage, be targeted by debuffs or buffs, and so on. The only way to return them is to destroy their mirror copy, which Astra Astranlix creates. 
Finally, Astralix gets different bonuses based on the affinities present on your team. Perfect team composition is key to defeating her. You will need to be certain that you can best your own champions before they blast you with your own tricks. Be sure to have plenty of damage, reliable crowd control, and a finely tuned turn order. You don't get the first turn. Uh, you do get the first turn as the attacker unless Astralix is faster. Oh, snap. Okay. And decreasing the turn meter of the mirror team would give you a massive advantage. Okay. It would, unless they also have the same abilities. Hot damn it. Did these guys even think through this before they gave these guys like some OP level kind of craziness? Jeez, goodness. Uh, the Fae Saphirs, Saphirs you gain by defeating Astralix, Astranlix will allow you to craft a lethal artifact set. It's a four piece set that lets the wearer ignore 25% of the target's defense and grants a 10% crit bonus. Awesome for any self-respect and damage dealer. Yeah, that sounds good. Huh. Wow. Yeah, wow. All right, so now that we're done that, clan changes. I have no clue who I'm going to bring into this, just so you know. No clue right now. We'll have to test that out. Clan changes. As always, we've monitored player feedback closely after update 4.5. Our original goal was to provide a new activity that would inspire clan members to cooperate and develop their clan together. But they were idiots. With the feedback in mind, we've taken steps to rectify these issues and get new clan activities back on track with our original vision. Yay! All clan quests will be available to all clans. No prerequisites. Great! Elite clan quests are available to all clans starting from level 1. Fantastic! Finally, I don't have to go to my clan quest and not be able to take one because they're all taken. You still need to cooperate to get the best results. Of course, it's up to clan leadership to establish the rules around the teamwork. Furthermore, we will increase the rewards for clan quest completion. Great. Basics up to 100, 200 for expert and 350 for elite clan quests. So while some clan quests will indeed be simpler to complete than other high tier challenges will offer more significant rewards. All right, finally, three and five slots in the clan shop will no longer feature affinity potions. Who needed that? No one does affinity potions. You get that crap from the potion keeps when even if you don't want it. Uh, we've added chests with revenge accessories. 5% chance to counterattack when hit instead. Ooh, that's pretty nice especially for AOE damage dealers on the A1. That could be interesting. Uh, we hope that these steps will help resolve some of the issues that have arisen with new clan activities. But we'll keep a close eye on it and can expect further tweaks in the future. Be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments. All right, so we got a new fusion. Uh, Rorik Wormbane. I'm sure he's coming in Oh, probably the end of this week is my thought. Yeah, probably the end of this week. I think we're two weeks yeah since the last one all right uh spirit champion barbarians hey just knowing that he's a spirit champion from the barbarians i need to finish barbarian faction wars uh, here so we will be doing him literally does not matter what he has we're gonna build him out get him ready uh here all right so attacks one enemy two times each hit has a 40 percent chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn each hit will fill this champion's turn meter by 15% if the target is not under a debuff after the hit. Ooh, interesting. Uh, books up to 50% chance, so that's cool. 15% damage increase, also cool. Oh, and then he can increase his turn meter. Yeah, if you build, yeah, he can increase his turn meter by 30% or up to 30% uh, if he is uh, not rolling. All right, cool. Attacks when enemy has a 100% chance when booked of decreasing the target's turn meter by 75%. Cool. If this skill fully depletes the target's turn meter, also has a 100% chance of placing a stun debuff on all other enemies for one turn. 
That sounds like a spider ability if I've ever seen one. This also sounds like a dark fey ability. Oh. Huh. Yeah, that makes kind of sense. Yeah. Bring him into dark fey. He slaps one of the champions, stuns the rest of them so that our team can take a turn. And then uh, if you have even more stun champions, you can put more stuns out for the next round. All right. Cool. Attacks one enemy will ignore 50% of the target's defense. That's his basic. Ascended is attacks one enemy will ignore 50% of the target's defense. Wait, isn't that exactly the same? Yeah, that's exactly the same. That's really weird. Did I not read that right? Yeah, that's exactly the same. Oh, hell no. Yeah, that's weird. Maybe they just wrote it wrong. Uh, passive effect. We'll always use this skill instead of the default skill when counterattacking. That's great. This skill will not be blocked by active block active skill debuffs. Great. Yeah, that's fantastic. Immune to stun debuffs. Ooh. Deals 25% more damage to bosses and... Or sorry, 15% more damage to bosses and receives 15% less damage from them. Definitely a champion worth building. I right hear. Yeah, he's all single target attacks, but sounds like he's a boss killer. And then, you know, his uh, dragon rage... Uh, here would be just putting out the stun so huh he might be yeah he might make sense uh, to build out well i'm gonna build him out anyway because i need to finish barbarian uh, faction wars we're in a we're in the quest of fun to get lydia man in the quest all right uh calval axe calval axe Calvalax, Calvalax as the Duke of Doom. To those of you who are around for the Community Champion Concept Contest, you may recognize Calvalax as the Duke of Doom. And the winning artwork by the talented David Fitzsimmons. As promised, artists adjusted the concept a little. Oh, their artists adjusted the concept a little. And now Cavalex is ready to pledge his blade to your service in the world of Raid Shadow Legends. Great. Uh, David will naturally receive this champion for free as part of his reward for winning the contest, as he should. But uh, Cavalex will soon be added to the summoning pool. We'll release a special making of video about this champion in the coming weeks to mark the occasion. Stay tuned. Okay, cool. Uh, he's Knight Revenants. I do need to finish Knight Net Revenant. I would I do just I could probably finish it with the team that I have. I probably just need to rekit them. But uh, if I got him, sure, why not? He does look really strong. So attacks one enemy uh, oozing great sword. Attacks one enemy has forty percent booked up to 50 55 percent of increasing the duration of all poison debuffs on the target by one turn. Heals this champion by. 2.5 of their 2.5 percent of their max HP for each poison debuff on the target. Cool. Yeah, if you bring him in with like poison like champions, he'd be healing. So let's say you had 10. That's 25 percent right there of the max HP. That's not bad on a one. That heals one enemy, places an extra hit for each poison debuff on the target, up to three extra hits. Cool. Attacks all enemies. Damage increases according to the number of poison debuffs on a target. So that's like a poison poison damage multiplier. So that's awesome. Plus he gets an extra 30%. Yeah, not bad. And then uh, places four poison debuffs on all enemies for two turns at the start of each round. So he's constantly going to be pumping out poisons. Has a 50% chance of placing a 5% poison debuff on all enemies for one turn at the start of each turn. Wait, hold on. So he can place five poison debuffs? 
Yeah, so start of each round. Oh, okay. So like when he rolls, so when a new round rolls in, he's placing four poison debuffs. Then every time he has a turn, he gets an extra chance, a 50% chance to place one poison debuff for one turn on all enemies. And then whenever an enemy places a poison debuff on this champion, instantly removes it and replaces it with 50% continuous heal instead for two turns not bad i like how they said enemy because then you could bring um cult brawler is it who does poisons on eyes and i've just been giving him continuous heal so good thing that they said that so you can't put poisons on yourself here because that would be uh that'd just be op right here cool good champion if i get him i will build him uh here but most likely knowing my pulls in the mid game will not get him for a long time. Hey, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. No ninja watchers. No ninja watchers. No ninja watchers. Go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button down below. It helps my channel a lot and I definitely appreciate everyone who watches my videos. Have a fantastic day, guys. We'll see you again next time. Let's chat then.